Well, all righty then, ladies and gentlemen, let's move right along to song number two on this Joyner Lucas Evolution train. I always have my damn ringer on. Roll it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano The Third. Y'all guys, third family. If you're new here and you're not subscribed and you like what you see at the end of the video, consider clicking the subscribe button bottom right hand corner. Now, we started the we started this whole evolution, you know, train that we're about to go on. God damn it, I thought I'd turn that off. We started this whole thing that we went on with Evolution, which is the title track, but now we're moving on to On This Way, featuring the game, which is obviously a huge, a huge feature. And it's the game, and I wanna say I, Isla, I think it's pronounced. <clears throat> I'm not too sure, but I was really fucking with Evolution, so I'm excited for this one. There's really not too much to say. Follow your boy on Instagram and on Twitter at Third Earnest, just like the channel. The links are down in the description below. And we got On This Way, Joiner Lucas. Let's get it. And I think I've encountered my hardest days. Lord, won't you save me? Oh, you know what I've been praying for. And I never thought I'd see this day. Yeah. I gotta make it change. Is this person singing? Is this the is this the feature after the game? But I like it so far. I like the whole church Christian gospel type vibe because it fits right along with the theme of the first track, Evolution. We're trying to like grow and become better people, you know? And I think I've encountered my uh, Writing plans to make a new report. Yeah. Oof, bro. That beat came in like that heavy. And on top of that, the beat reminds me of uh heard him say that it has like that same, it has that same clap in like in like an echoey chamber and then the beat and then the bass, like the eight the way it hits heavy like i don't know why i'm getting that from kanye west and i think i've encountered my hardest uh, days writing plans to make a new report yeah. grind harder turn my basement to a jewelry store if you don't do it for your kids then who you do it for mm. i'm trying to read and learn some shit i never knew before focus on the if you ain't do it for your kids and who you do it for especially all these rappers out there that got kids but then they, it, it almost seems like they ain't doing shit like they're just they're collecting all this money for themselves not for not for their kids and again that's just part of growing up realizing that once you have a kid it is no longer about you it is now about your offspring that you brought into this world and he says i'm reading shit to, to learn the things i never knew before you can't stay ignorant your whole life fam i'm trying to read and learn some shit i never knew before focus on investments build me up some new resorts we can Ooh. manifest it you rather hit the louis star wasting all your blessings mm. caring about the ones who doubt you just to impress some hoes who never gave a fuck about you just Ooh. without a he said, bro, you only care about the ones who doubt you just to impress some fucking hoes and never gave shit about that. They didn't give a shit about you, dog. That's one thing that like, one of the things that I can't stand, and this is why I stopped doing it on my channel, because I used to, back when like my channel wasn't as big, and I would be able to read every single comment under every single video. I maybe only got like 30, 40 comments. If I saw a bad one, I would like hone in on it and talk shit to them. A not aggressive way, like a subtlety of like being a dick. But then as the channel grew, I'm like, yo, why am I giving all my energy to the people that don't like what I'm doing? Why am I not giving the energy, my energy to people who are enjoying what I'm doing, who want to see the channel grow, who are not just being trolls, you know? And again, that's all part of growth. It's all part of realizing like, don't, don't be patronizing and giving your energy to the ones that hate on you when most people don't. Most people are going out of their way to watch your shit. Most people are going out of their way to spend 20 minutes on my channel and I should be thankful for those blessings this whole album right here just this whole album I've done two tracks but this whole but these two tracks so far like immense growth in terms of the way that I don't know if he's always thought this way or if it's his first time putting it on the record and in like that package form where it's like yo we got to be better as people we got to be better as rappers we got to be smarter with our money that type of thing he's like I, I want to buy some resorts I want to invest in things I want to watch my money grow for me where you'd rather go and blow a grand or blow a stack at the Louis store. Like, who gives a fuck about the Louis Vuitton, you know? Just some grown man type bars, dog. Caring about the ones who doubt you, just to impress some hoes who never gave a fuck about you, just what I discovered. Never believe the family, that word is really your cover. Just a Ooh. title that had the advantage. You never believed in family, family, that word is just a cover that will blow away with the wind. That that shit is paper thin. Like just because you my family don't mean that you're supporting me in the way that family does. I got dudes out here that I don't have any blood relation with and they are bigger supporters of me and what I'm doing over here than family. And I'm not saying that's the way I think. Generally speaking, my entire family is pretty on board with the decision that I made. But he's just talking like give a fuck about family. Family is just a word to some of these people. They don't really they don't really understand the meaning. Believe 
with the family, that word is really your cover Just a title that have the advantage to keep you under See? I got niggas Ooh. I consider brothers more than my brothers Watching you show your colors See, I got people that I consider brother more than my brothers, not me. You know, my brother and my brothers that are not, that are not part of my actual family. Like, they're all the same. But sometimes the snakes that are slithering in your grass are, are trying to disguise themselves as family compared to the ones that are on the outside. Watching you show your colors. We living in a world where prison walls is deprivation. Living in a world with snitching calls for celebration. Living in a world where niggas crawl in segregation. Rainy nights and desperation. Pray we fight the legislation. Protested God. till we flatline paralyzed. Protested till we flatline paralyzed. Like where we fight to the death. Again, I've said this in like all videos that have that I'm talking about lyricism. People who are able to take a common phrase, fight to the death, but flip it in a way to make to make the rhyme scheme, flip it in a way to sound to make it sound more poetic. He said we're living in a world where people snitch and cause for celebration, dog, yo. And then he has the song Snitch, and then also this is obviously talking about 6ix9ine, or that's the most relevant, that's the most, literally the most relevant snitch in like the last, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years. And as soon as he comes out the prison talking about how we snitched and got a bag, like, bro, and nobody who's actually an adult gives a fuck about your bag. All we care about is that you fucking snitched. That's it. You lost all your street cred. And it's clear that from the beginning, that street cred that you have, you shouldn't, that street cred that you had, you shouldn't even had it. This is a perfect track for the game to go on top of, because the game spits this kind of shit. Protest until we flatline paralyzed. They throwing stones at my Black Lives Matter signs. Made a change, but we still not satisfied. I can't smile half the time. I'm still, I'm still waiting, sitting, plotting on the couch. Cause I know that I ain't safe when all these cops is on the prowl. Trying to think of other ways, but we ain't got no other route. I'm starting to understand that shit that Pac was talking about. Word. I think I'm starting to understand that shit that Pac was talking about, dog. Like, this type of, like, grown man bars, like I keep on saying, this is the type of shit that Pac was on at, like, 22 years old. This this is what he talked about. This is the poetic nature that he had within his lyrics. Like, a lot of people will see Tupac, and they know, like, hit him up, and they know all the thug type of tracks. But really deep down, yes, he had the thug mentality, but he was, he was, he was very introspective with his lyrics. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people, you'll hear them say that he was ahead of his time, because he, he was able to feel like, those both of those avenues the thug avenue and the kind of conscious rap at the same time this production remind like I already said it at the beginning, but I was that that was when I said the Kanye West reference, that was more in reference to the graduation. Cause I think graduation is the one that had the truck and that heard the truck, that had the track, heard him say, and that's like that beat that I was talking about. But like this production right here just reminds me of Kanye West. It reminds me of the interlude going into spaceship on the college dropout. Like that that's the vibe that I'm getting. And even Kanye now with like Jesus is King, this I mean this is very reminiscent of that. Did you hear that right there? I think I've encountered my and then boom beat drops in. That was clean. I was not expecting that. Right here. And I think I've encountered my look. Thomas money in the clock ticking. I teach my son love and respect. That's a God given. My sperm don't have never been shit, just a flop. Listen, if it wasn't for my step pops, I'd probably turn out different. Ooh, probably. ooh, he said my sperm donor, dog. I thought I didn't realize he was talking about his dad. Like, yo, that's 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 a bar. Cause he's like, he wasn't even my pops, like my sperm donor. Cause that's literally all that he might have done in his relationship with me. That's he might as well have only been the sperm donor to my mom and then had me. Cause she did everything on her own. He was just as absent as if she went to the sperm bank. Clean ass line. And and I, who knows if I would be this way if it wasn't for my step pop stepping up to the fucking plate and and basically raising me to be the man that I am. Dog. That was a bar. If it wasn't for my step pops, I'd probably turn out different. Thanks. Probably be in a cell doing a live sentence. Thanks. Probably had 20 baby mamas and nine bitches. Thanks. Probably grow up misguided, twisted inside the system, dropped out of failed, cause nobody listened to my admission. Yeah. Sick of getting in fights. Dog, dog, just talking about like this alter like this 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 other life in another timeline that he would have had had his step pops not have not been there for him. That's like 
as heavy. It kind of reminds me of the track from uh, from Lupe Fiasco, Could Have Been. It was like on a mixtape way before he was, but way before he was signed. I could have been hustling bad, struggling bad. If I wasn't up in the lab, shit, I might just be cutting your grass, walking your dog, pumping your gas, nothing at all. Like if it wasn't for this rap game, I this 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 whole entire separate life could have been me. I'd probably be flipping a burger, attempting to murder, paralyzed, sitting on Gerber. I could be working at Jewels, chain snatching, jerking your jewels, homeless worker for food. I might be cleaning your pool, preaching to fools, teaching the schools, leeching, smoking weed to be cool. Probably grow up misguided, twisted inside the system, dropped out and failed, cause nobody listened to my admission. Sick of getting in fights with niggas less educated. Sick of getting advice from niggas who never made it. Sick of being pol I'm sick of getting advice from people who ain't never make it, bro. Now, it's been said in many rap songs before, and it's like, it's something that many people have lived their life by. Like, don't ever take advice from someone that's doing worse than you. Well, what do they know more so than you do? You're obviously more successful in your career, so who are they to give you advice? I'm sick of getting in fights with people that's less educated, like they're ignorant, like we're getting in fights about things that they don't even know what they're talking about, but I'm wasting my energy on that. Sick of being polite to people with lesser patience. Oftentimes I wonder where I would be if I never made it. The hating always comes from niggas that wish they had all your blessings of the clout Them bad vibes forever, but I'm destined on this route I'm starting to understand that shit that X was talking about nah, I, was, I was hoping he was going to talk about X when he said bad vibes forever I, ca I can't even tell you how frustrated I am with the way that people have handled XXX Tentacions, like the way that they've handled all of his music, the way that they've gotten money grabs from him, like yo, has nothing to do with the track, but it pisses me off. But it really is true. Most of the hate comes from envy. It's not hating because they, they don't like your art. Most people that don't like your art are just gonna tell you like, yo, I fuck with you, but I'm just not a fan of what you make, like nothing personal. It's the ones that be hating, the ones that are envious of what you have, you know? Worst thing comes to worst, I fucking die a tragic, death or some shit and i'm not able to see out my dreams i at least want to know that the kids perceived my message and were able to make something of themselves and able to take my message and use it and turn it into something positive and to to at least have a good life life, life. if it ain't bl bro that that obviously that was x that, that was him talking right there before he passed away like that was that's one of the staple that's one of like the staple recordings of him and his positive mentality i hope you can separate the art from the artist and understand that i was trying to put good into this world you know and to to at least have a good life life, life. if it ain't black on i'm probably gonna use it to chop crack on hard white for all them hard nights i have my back on roach and yo the game's voice is fucking it's my it's been money since like oh two Use it to chop crack on Hard white for all them hard nights I had my back on Roach infested carpet Tiptoe in my mother's room See a dresser and felt no pressure When taking a 20 off it Compton like a closed coffin Dog Mm, oh, he just I just heard it right before I paused it. He said Compton like a closed coffin. Fuck, because nobody makes it out. You either make it out rapping, hooping, or you die, and they put you six feet in the ground. The game is so underrated as a lyricist and, and the capability he has as a storyteller, because right now there's really no bars. He's just saying I'm chopping up this white for every night that I had my back on some roach-infested floors. Like, yo, I'm master at delivering you those visuals, and people don't realize because I guess probably the same people that didn't realize how much Pac was like a a master at storytelling and a master because his his thug image like turned a lot of people who are not into that type of rap off but he's he's so he's such at a higher elevation in terms of mindset that people don't even realize unless you're a fan of him a closed coffin we walk in the school coffin often high off the gun smoke boston had at the front door cooking class i'm jay hove rock it up on they stole me and my teacher going back and forth like no name and j cole you said Ooh, i would never be going what? back and forth like no name and j cole that's fire you said I would never be what I wouldn't amount to what now you in this Trader Joe same line saying what's up talking about how you like my songs not knowing it was me security had me in that headlock and I told you I couldn't breathe now it's black lives matter and white letters on your shirt now how many black lives did you help or did you hurt did you handicap block push to excel or did you hinder since hindsight's 2020 I guess you don't remember now you with your mix since hindsight's 2020 I guess you don't remember Holy fuck, dog! I I couldn't even stop it because I was just listening to the story and listening to this buildup of like again, just kind of talking about like fake people, like like you hated at first, and you know you said that I wouldn't be shit when I was growing up. 
But now here you see me in the same line with you at Trader Joe's and you're telling me how you love all this shit. They got to smile through their teeth because they know deep down it's, it's, it's burdening them that you made it to where you said you were going to and they never did. You won't feel me till everybody say they love you but it's not love. Since hindsight's 2020, I guess you don't remember. Now you with your mixed child, having all these mixed feelings. But do your black husband know you tried to burn down our village? But never mind, front of line, that's for y'all to figure out. Just know that boy who wasn't shit bailed all his niggas out. And this my black queen. Just know that that boy that wasn't shit bailed all the homies out. Like he's just talking about like the, the hypocritical nature that some white people I assume or some people that, that are against black civil rights or you know just being treated as human beings. And then he's going all the way saying like they're a mixed child with one individual, how their bloodlines like him going all the way back to Africa. And then her, I assume in go like what he means is going all the way back to, to like slavery and oppression from like back in, you know, when the nation was being founded and how there's still that rift between the two races all these years later. And this my black queen, I kiss her on her black lips and she rock off white cause she support black shit. Ooh. And I'm blacker than the Stiller helmet or a Spike Lee flick. Black like the pick stuck in the Afro or Kaepernick. Duh. Yo, the game goes fucking hard. I hate to inform you if, you if you've never been informed. If you don't know, now you know. But like, that whole last shit right there was just straight fire, dog. And he said, my black queen, I kiss her on her black lips. She she rocks off white because we support black shit who is owned like an off white is owned by a black man. Bro, that whole off white, black, black lips, black queen, the, the white shirt with the black letters, like all of that shit. All that wordplay for black, white, that, that whole thing was fire right there. So far, we are two for two on this album, so I'm like not anticipating any kind of skips, but we'll see. But that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. If you like what you see, please consider liking the video, leaving a comment down below. If you like what you see enough, please consider subscribing. The activity from the comments and the likes and the subscriptions, all of that shit helps the channel grow, get sent and promoted in the recommended. Hit the notification bell if you're excited about this album or if you like it, because we are going track by track, so don't miss, don't miss one. Follow your boy on Instagram and on Twitter at the Third Earnest, just like the channel. The links are down in the description below. Hit up the Discord, also in the description below. The first link down in the description below is for Patreon. It's really the only way I make money doing these reactions for y'all, and it's the only way, it's the only income that I have coming in is the people who are supporting over there because I am full time, specifically from the people who are supporting over there that allowed me to go full time, so that way I could, you know, basically leave the job that was forcing me to delete the channel because of a reputational risk. So if you're in a monetary position and you feel like you get enough enjoyment out of the channel that you want to support me over there, greatly appreciate it. But that's it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. Like I always say, I appreciate your time and go out there in the world, love and care for one another, love and care for each other, and I'll catch everybody on the next video. Peace.